Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Uh, we're back as part five in our series on uh, uh, helping you understand uh, Slurm so that you can migrate your workloads. Today, uh, I'm joined again by Nick Eiley, the Director of Cloud at SCEDMD. Uh, Nick's joining us from Utah. Hey, Nick. Hi, thanks for having me back. And uh, Josiah Bjorgard in Seattle, who's one of our senior solution uh, architects in the partner uh, organization, uh, who does a lot of work with, uh, with SCEDMD. Hey, Josiah. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, now, so we're going we're gonna to talk about the Slurm API today. Uh, Parallel Cluster's got an API just recently, and Slurm is, Slurm's got an API. And the, the, kind of the combination of those two things, the, we, we kind of think that the imagination uh, should run wild. Uh, I'm keen to I'm keen to get into I'm keen to just jump straight into some discussion about what the API looks like and where it came from, uh, and then uh, Josiah is going to actually walk us through a really cool example of it that he's that he's uh, built in a Jupyter environment. So we we developed the the API about about a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, in our 20.02 release. Um, so it's you know relatively relatively new. Um, originally, it was supposed to just uh, replace S batch submissions. Uh, we saw a lot of customers that were using SSH wrappers uh, to do that, and that can only go so far. Uh, <laughs> so the rest of the interface kind of took the man in the middle out of the, out of it, and 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 um, optimized that a lot more. Um, but you know, from there, it's, it's now turned into a you know full true programmatic communication between uh, um, you know your systems that you have, whatever those might be, and and Slurm. Um, you know, sites are using it to automate workflows, uh, uh, sites, we've been talking to sites that have been building their own kind of GUI tools to, to submit jobs, to monitor jobs, um, view kind of the, the job statistics and metrics and those type of things. Um, and, and, you know, the use case that Josiah is going to show today, which is an awesome use case we've been seeing a lot of sites, um, talk about and, and start trying to integrate is, uh, is a Jupyter Notebook integration. So. Let's have a look at the actual API architecture first. Yeah, I'll just briefly kind of talk through it. So the, the REST API speaks directly to, uh, to the Slurm uh, API. So it makes it very durable. It's really scalable because of that. Um, we do have security uh, uh, authentication involved in that as well, uh, where typically with Slurm, you, you're dealing with Munge. So we have the, the users here when they're submitting uh, jobs and, and, and running Slurm commands. Uh, Munge is involved to authenticate all those processes and those those requests. Um, with uh, with the REST API, we're actually using uh, JSON Web Tokens uh, to to uh, add that authentication layer in there. Um, and so Josiah is going to going to show that. Um, it is important to note that the Slurm REST API is really intended for uh, a, a distributed architecture, but it's not for external systems. Um, so it should be uh, a T TLS wrapped um, outside of trusted networks. So that's just an important thing um, to, to remember when sites are using that. Um, is that it doesn't contain uh, HTTPS by default. So that's one thing I always like to, to highlight for sites. Um, but most of Slurm's functionality is available through the, the REST API. So um, let's start by talking through the diagram, actually. So this is a diagram of what I have set up. Um, so there's a, a workshop that we've built that we'll, we'll add a link to um, that will walk you through setting up this infrastructure here. Um, we have a Jupyter notebook on the left-hand side and we're issuing REST calls to Slurm uh, in parallel cluster on the right-hand side of this diagram. And parallel cluster sets up HPC infrastructure using AWS services. Um, so Slurm is actually on the head node of parallel cluster and uh, as was mentioned before, the Slurm uh, REST API is, is there and, uh, and listening to the API commands that are sent from the Jupyter Notebook. We're using uh, authentication in an API key um, that comes through uh, the secrets manager on AWS. So I'll show you how we actually grab the API key and then issue REST commands to Slurm in this document. Um, but First, I want to show you an actual use case. So 
uh, I'm going to jump down a little bit in this Jupyter notebook and start start with the high level, actually running a simulation and analyzing the results in the Jupyter notebook. And then I'll jump back and show you the open API specification, generating an API from that and issuing um, calls to Slurm to look at the job, submit a job. So jump down here. I'm going to submit a simulation. This is using a code called Athena++. It's an astrophysical hydrodynamics code. Um, and this is the specification for that job. So it's nice because I can set up the job parameters in here, the input file for my simulation right in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, and I can go back and modify these parameters. And then in a later cell where I do my post analysis, uh, I can have all of that set up and, and just modify by the workflow uh, from the Jupyter Notebook. So if I wanted to change the mesh parameters, I would just go ahead and run this cell again, um, run the next cell where I submit the job, uh, the next cell where I pull down the simulation results, and then the final cell where I do the analysis. Let me show you how that works. Um, so I executed that cell. Now we'll submit the job using the REST API. And I get a, some information back from Slurm telling me what the job number was. Mm -hmm. I can also list the recent jobs. So you can see that it's configuring a, a node here. So it's spinning up a node to run this job on, Fantastic. all from the Jupyter Notebook. But I do conveniently have the simulation results ready. <laughs> Here's job. one I baked earlier. You're the Martha Stewart of the clustering world. <laughs> um, I'm using the AWS CLI to download the results from an S3 bucket. Um, one thing we do in here that's kind of under the covers is we put... Um, uh, a command to copy the simulation results to an S3 bucket in the batch script that we submit. So it's somewhere that we can then access the simulation results. So I've now plotted the results that I just downloaded. Um, and I'm looking at the time step as a function of time here. It, it varies in this simulation. So we can show something a little more interesting, which is a plot of the density. As you can see, I'm just jumping through these things. These are post analysis that we've baked previously. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to really think about how I'm going to do the post analysis when I run a new simulation with new parameters. And now I'm plotting the, uh, the density um, over time right here. Now I can go back and change my parameters for the, uh, the grid, um, the grid size, grid shape, and rerun the simulation and then do my analysis. I don't have to log into a cluster. I don't have to copy files around, input files up to a head node or anything like that. It's all in the Jupyter Notebook, really self-contained. And I can submit the jobs without even knowing how to use Bash. Um, and now everybody's doing astronomy and they're doing it inside their Jupyter Notebook without even leaving to have to go and run jobs or check on jobs or anything. That's, that's really neat. Okay, cool. Uh, do we want to wind back and go back to the go back to the start and show us a little bit about the what's under the under the hood? Yeah, we can um, take a look at the authentication. I can show you the the endpoints, and then I'll show you REST calls to look at the job, submit a job, and um, look at the node information. We need to gain the API key from Secrets Manager, and we've put uh, a script as as post installed a parallel cluster in there that drops the secret key into Secrets Manager. I've used that helper function to grab the API key. You can see it right here. Um, I guess by the time this workshop airs, this uh, API key will change because it actually cycles in Slurm according to a specific time period. So you can set a time period to cycle this API key. I think by right. default, it's something like an hour, um, something like that. But you can set that parameter if you like. Um, so now that we have the API key, let's grab the endpoint. I'm just grabbing it from the, the CloudFormation stack output. And then we can go ahead and issue our first direct REST call to the Slurm REST API, which is the open API specification. And I'll go ahead and print out all of the endpoints from that here. Hmm. Another thing to note here is that there are two categories of endpoints. There's Slurm and Slurm DB. So you can access accounting functions of Slurm. Yeah, if you, if you actually be. watched one of our earlier videos that we did, we we cover a whole accounting section. And so that this covers the, uh, the this endpoint covers the um, all aspects of what we showed in that 
uh, for the most part, all access is what we showed in that, that video of creating accounts, managing those accounts, and then viewing it, uh, uh, past job information. The only, um, kind of metric that we don't pull from the database right now with the with the rest api is the roll-up reports which would be kind of equivalent to s report in slurm but all the job accounting data you're able to pull through uh through the rest api nick you could easily see people like system administrators actually pulling together a jupyter notebook to use the api to actually do some analysis some high level analysis of their users activity and maybe even they might even yeah. run one of these notebooks each day when they get into the office just to see if there's anything quirky happening on the cluster. Uh, you know, somebody's usage is blown out or somebody's getting stuck because, you know, the job's are not getting run. I mean, you can any number of different things. Right. And this would be yeah, pretty easy to do inside Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have all that job data. And so, you know, uh, all the, the metrics about each, each of the jobs that are being submitted. So, yeah, you can pull that together. <laughs> From this open API specification, um, you can generate a client API for Python um, using open API generator, for example, it's quite easy. Um, so I've done that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and import the, the open API client and two functions here, ping and get nodes. So we can print some information, um, pinging the head node to make sure it's active show that it's up. There's lots of information that's gained when we run this call to get node information, host name, and the node state to see what nodes are, are up, which nodes are idle. So I'll go ahead and execute that. You can see the head node is pinged, it responds up, and all of our nodes are idle right now. The next thing, of course, is let's look at what jobs are running. That's what, what most users of Slurm um, um, know. They like to know what jobs are running and submit jobs. So no, they want their jobs to have run already. That's that's actually what they want. <laughs> they want to know what's going on with my job and why it hasn't run yet. <laughs> Similar to the previous calls, I, I'm storing, I'm running the call to the REST API, storing the response, and then printing job ID, the job state, and the host. And so cool. job number 15, it completed. But let's run another one. So this is a, a, a super simple hello world example. Um, I'm going to use the submit job endpoint. I'm going to create the job information in a dictionary in Python. Um, so it includes the directories, the number of tasks, the number of nodes, environment information, and then a script. So I can submit the script that I'm going to run in Slurm here. I'm going to print out a random number that I generate in this Jupyter notebook. Go ahead and submit that. Submitted job number 16. So I can print out a table, for example, of, of what nodes or what queues I have in this case, partitions. Um, and show the total number of CPUs, the total number of nodes, and how many have online. It's important to note that you can build your own implementation with this. You can take these REST API calls, build a, a client library that does exactly what you want it to um, without anything you don't want it to. So you don't need to uh, have every single parameter in this job specification set by your users. You could just um, build a function that will run your simulations on an HPC cluster um, with the parameters that you want. Um, so you might automatically set the number of nodes based on the simulation size. So your users don't have to worry about that. And they can just work in the Jupyter notebook and run large scale simulations and analyze the results. If you're anybody like me, you do a lot of prototyping of those kinds of things in a Jupyter environment because it's an easy place to do it. And then you stick your code, you may want to maybe wanting to stick some of this code into places like Lambda. Data arrives from an instrument somewhere, you do some processing on it. Uh, and then a Lambda function uses the Slurm API to spit it into a cluster and do some really hard crunching on it. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, uh, Josiah, that was a really cool demo. And Nick, thanks for the background on the uh, on the API. I think this is going to be, I'm going to be really interested to see what, what, folks do with this uh, out there in cluster land and you know, hoping to see some really imaginative examples of it popping out soon. The last thing I'll say is that if anybody's got the ideas that they'd like to see us cover in future check short, uh, DM us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and until the next time, uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave you for now. Thanks very much.